Hi there, it's Jason from Codemanship with another rookie mistake video. Now, something I see a lot of developers doing when they're introduced to writing unit tests or test-driven development is they try to chase 100% test coverage. They want all of their code covered by tests. Um, now, this is a helpful thing to have. Um, if your regression tests are testing everything, then that's great. Um, but the way they go about it quite often is they, they interpret that to mean they need tests for every element of their design, tests for every class or module, tests for every method or function, tests for constructors and getters and setters. And what that tends to lead to um, is a lot of tests and a lot of test code. So let's say, for example, we're given a requirement to add let, let customers add items to their shopping basket. Um, and we might maybe sketch out a little sort of domain model, a little design. And in in the, our quest for 100% code coverage, we set about sort of working through that internal design and writing tests for every part of the, de, the design. So we might end up with something like this, where we're testing constructors and all kinds of details of the the design. Not only does this lead to a lot of test code and a lot of tests, but also um, when we write tests that are about the internal details of our design, we're coupling our test code to that internal design more, which means we're essentially baking in that internal design with all that extra test code, making it much harder to refactor or change it if we need to. Now, I'm very much in the habit when I write developer tests, when I write unit tests, um, I set out to test the actual behavior. So if the requirement I'm giving is adding items to a shopping basket, that's the test that I will write. Um, and you will see that there's a lot less test code here. I'm just focusing on the actual action of adding a basket. Now, this involves the same design details, for example, constructors for product and basket. Um, but there is a lot less test code, number one. Number two, my test code knows a lot less about the internal design. A lot more of it is hidden from the tests, which means it's going to be much easier to change or refactor that internal design if I need to. Now, if our quest is to get 100% coverage, let's just check. First of all, with our original tests, did we cover every line of code with our tests? Let's just find out. And unsurprisingly, because I wrote tests for everything, um, unsurprisingly, we've got 100% line coverage with our tests. Now, what about the other test that is just for adding an item? Let's find out. Does that achieve 100% code coverage? No, it doesn't. We've got some gaps here. We've got some code that's not actually being executed when we run this test. Let's just take a look and see what that code is. So let's take a look in basket here. Um, and it's the getters for name and price on product. Now, let's think about this. To add an item to a shopping basket, do we actually need to know what the product's name is? Do we need to know what its price is? Or is that something we've kind of added to the design to use a term that's becoming very popular now in this age of generative AI? We've hallucinated internal details of the design that we don't actually need. I could... For the purposes of adding an item to a basket, I could get rid get rid of these, um, get, get rid of the getters, but I could get rid of all of it, really, if I wanted to. Um, let's just make sure that our add item test still works. So the test is still passing. What's that done to the coverage? So the coverage is now 100%. In other words, every element of the internal design that we need in order to add an item exists and there are no elements that we don't need so that's the the, the third danger um, when we write tests for everything for every method and every class is that we can end up with um, tests that are about parts of the design that we don't actually need it then becomes very very difficult to tell if we did need them unless we can go back to the original requirements so hang on a minute we don't actually need that so the other danger with this is that we end up with, with a speculative design. We end up kind of imagining parts of a design. Well, of course, a product has a name and it has a price that have actually got nothing to do with the behavior, the user outcome, adding an item that we're actually setting out to implement here. So when it comes to writing developer tests, unit tests, for example, um, it's better to set out to test a particular action or a behavior or a user outcome and let the design details take care of themselves. You end up with far fewer tests. 
your test code um, is usually far less coupled um, to the internal design, making it much easier to change that internal design later. And also you're less likely to end up with elements of your internal design you don't actually need.